Okay, hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me here today. My name is Cynthia and I'm a licensed acupuncturist in Ontario, Canada. So I just thought for today I would make a video that is a little bit more contemplative. So what I'm going to do is read over some of my favorite quotes from Oriental Medicine and it'll just be a time to sit and think about the meaning of these quotes and just, you know, just a relaxing video. There's not going to be much to look at. And I'm just going to go through the quotes and share a little bit of the meaning of them. So the first quote is, One disease, long life. No disease, short life. Sounds a little bit ironic but this is really about how people who get a bad sickness maybe early in life it often teaches them a lot of valuable lessons about their health you know that they've had to learn to overcome their weakness and are perhaps more invested in staying healthy and learning healthy habits to promote their health whereas someone who's never really experienced a disease may be sort of taking their health for granted and, you know, likely to be a bit more foolish, a little bit reckless because, you know, they kind of feel almost invincible, you know, so they will do things that are more, um, more risky, more dangerous and, you know, possibly end up living a shorter life. And this is one I use quite often in clinic. Where there is blockage, there is pain. Where there is no blockage, there is no pain. So this is about the flow of energy in the body. When the channels of the body, this is where we're, what we're activating when we're doing acupuncture, we're activating the channels. The channels are where the energy flows through. So if the channels are blocked, it means the energy is blocked. And this is the basic foundation for all pain in the body. Before 30, men seek disease. After 30, diseases seek men. So this is a way of saying how when we are younger, we tend to not be so concerned with our health. And so, you know, we're kind of engaging in actions that are likely to be more harmful to our health. But for an older person, disease comes effortlessly without having to try too hard. No man is a good doctor who has never been sick himself. This means that a good doctor is someone who has compassion for the sick, often because he can relate to the patient's situation. You know, he can exchange himself with the patient, what it's like to be on the other side, because he's had this experience himself, you know, and compassion, receiving this love from another human being is, is a key part of our healing. The superior doctor prevents sickness. The mediocre doctor attends to impending sickness. The inferior doctor treats actual sickness. Okay, so this one is about preventative medicine, the value of prevention, being able to read the body on a more subtle level, which oriental medicine is quite strong in, being able to, to read the body and to read the emotions and see what is out of balance before it really hits by seeing the signs in the pulse, in the tongue, in palpating the acupuncture points, certain points on the body that are diagnostic, facial coloring, tone of voice. There's many different things that we can read into uh, to understand the body and find out what's out of balance before it turns into something that we would need to take a drug for or need to go to a hospital for. And so that's very, very useful because if we've ever experienced a serious illness, we understand the saying that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. 
control your emotions or they will control you. Now, this has meaning on a lot of levels and with Oriental medicine, there's an understanding that keeping an even state of mind, a fairly calm and clear mind is helpful to healing because the emotions are powerful. There are seven emotions listed in Chinese medicine, anger, overjoy, which basically means too much excitement, worry, anxiety, grief, fear, and shock. And it's also said that the emotions harm our organs directly. So I'll just explain these connections between the emotions and the organs. So fear harms the kidney. Worry harms the spleen. Grief harms the lungs. Overexcitement harms the heart, as does shock. Anger harms the liver and anxiety harms the stomach. He that takes medicine and neglects diet wastes the skill of the physician. So this is just a way of showing how important it is what we're eating every day because these are the eating is something we do every single day is having a huge effect on our health. So what I love about this quote is it reminds me of something that David Wolf said a long time ago when I read his book, The Sun Food Diet Success System. So that was, I don't know, maybe 2003, I think I read that. And it has a lot of profound things in it, even though I'm not really 100% into uh, raw diets anymore. It was a great book and I got a lot out of it. But one thing he said in particular, he said, how is it that big pharma has us thinking that if we take this little white pill, put it in our mouth, chew it up and swallow it, that it's going to heal us. But if we take some healthy food, put it in our mouth, chew it up and swallow it, that it does nothing. How is that? Anyway, I, I just think that, that was profound and talk doesn't cook rice. I know this one isn't so much about medicine per se, but I just like it. I just think if I had a Chinese mom or dad or grandma, I, I could just kind of imagine them saying something like this to me. Talk doesn't cook the rice. You know, it's like if you want things to happen, you've got to take action, which means you've got to decide on something. You know, you can't just be in this limbo land of indecision. If you want, if you find yourself in this weird land of limbo and indecision, you know, that's okay. But, you know, think things over. But then if you want to get moving again, you've got to imagine, you know, like you've got a grandparent saying this to you. Tension is who you think you should be. Relaxation is who you are. So I just think that's really quite sweet, eh? It's talking about how much stress we put ourselves through by creating this idea in our mind, thinking that things should be other than what they are or that we should be something other than who we are right now. You know, so it's basically about radical self-acceptance and how healing that can be. And that, and that doesn't mean that we're lazy and we don't want to improve, but that we can still have this peace and acceptance about ourselves and our situation, whatever it is, and that gives us inner peace. So anyhow, I'm just going to wrap things up on that note and just want to thank you all for contemplating these words with me and I look forward to joining you in the next video.